Okay, let's get started. Let's get settled into the introductory task, please. Okay, good morning, gentlemen. Okay, today what we want to do is continue on getting, under, uh, getting a deeper understanding of all the air relationships that exist with our angles. So that's what our task is going to be about today. So it's building on from what we did last lesson and again, giving you some more tools that you can use for your project explanation that's due next week. Okay, so what we want to, there's, our, our, there's what we want to do, there's our relationships in a given diagram today, so we're going to obviously get a diagram, and we're drawing diagrams now, but we want to see those relationships between, between all the angles. What we want to concentrate on, can we work on using the correct terms? Okay, so understanding correct terms, so you've got a few terms in the first task to draw some diagrams, but we need to use those, ta those terms again today. And also, we need to be able to work out our values from a, di from a given diagram, so given, given a scenario. Okay, so that's what we want to aim to do today, and we'll, so we'll check in at the end to see if, we can, if we've done that. They're not vertically opposite, are they? How can you find that information? Where have we done that? We, what, what's our four before me? Have you checked your books? Okay. Have you checked with somebody on your table? Okay. Come on. Let's start using it. Let's use, start using those tools. There we go. Okay. Good. Going back to some. Previous notes, good. Okay, where's our, where's our notes from earlier in the week? Or last week? Okay, remember some tasks we did earlier in the week? We did some of these, so if you're not sure. Good boy, you wanna come and bring it up and show us? Put it under the camera? Come on, you're good. Okay, we'll come up, we're gonna get we're going to get Tim to come up and show us what he's done. Okay, Tim, let's have a look at Tim's diagrams and see if they match up to yours. If you're, you're not sure about some of these terms. Okay, just shift it across. That's the way. Okay, explain away, Tim. George, are we listening? The first one for angle of incidence and angle of re reflection. What, did, what, what do we mean by those? I got help from my four B family. Okay, excellent. Okay, so you use some. So what did they what, what did they say to you? What hint did they give you? They told me that, that the line that goes like that across the top. Yeah. Okay. Speak loudly so everyone can hear you. Just turn around a little bit so everyone can hear you. So this line here. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So who helped you? Who helped you? Out? Who helped gave you this idea? Adrian. Who was it? Yusuf. No, <laughs> no one's no one's going. Collaboratively, you got the idea. Because what are we seeing with an angle of incidence and reflection? So what do we mean by an angle of incidence? Well, obviously, when we're talking about our pull trick, the ball comes in on the cushion, and then what happens to it? It bounces off, doesn't it? Okay. And what do we know though? What do we know? Are we paying attention? What do we know about these, these two angles? <laughs> They're the same, good. Victor, you want to add something? Uh, like the line at the top, that's the Okay, yep. So it's going, it's going to be a straight line that bounces off. Okay, the, line, the angle that we create here with the line coming in would be the same, gives us the same angle as the line going out there. I had a question. What do you th what are you thinking? What what would what would be what would be your best guess at that? Yeah, I think it might have a chance. Depends on how curved it is, okay. But I, I think it might have some effect, it, depending on the curve. If it's really curved or it's only a slight curve, but we probably have some effect on it, okay. Okay. What about our corresponding angles? 
Okay, are we happy that Tim's given us our correct corresponding angles? What do we know about corresponding angles, Tim? Okay, so you go, they're on the two parallel lines. Okay, what else do we know about them? When we've got those parallel lines? Not sure, Idris? Have the same value. They're going to be equal when they're on parallel lines. Okay, so co-interior angles. You've marked these two, is that right? Okay, so you see these marked those two. Two co-interior angles. What do we know about co-interior angles, Tim? Not 360, but they do add up to something. 180, there we go. Okay, so you got the idea that co-interior angles are going to add up together to give us 180 degrees. Now, alternate angles. We haven't marked these very clearly. Which one's the point you're indicating the alternate here? You remember? Sorry? Okay, do you know, can you show which, which ones you think might be alternate here? That angle, which one would be alternate to that one? So we've got that one, which one might be alternate to that one? Okay, so they're, they're just pointing out those two. What do we say, they were co-interior, weren't they? Okay, what do we think about alternate? Which one would be alternate here, Connor? Oh, so that one and then the um, bottom right one. The bottom right one, this one here? Okay, so because what do we mean by alternate angles? They're the same on, on, on both sides of the transversal, okay, between the two parallel lines. So, and what else do we know about alternate lines, Tim? Alternate angles, not alternate lines. They're the same value. Good boy. Okay. Good, good thinking. Okay. You have to think hard about that, but you, you're getting a lot of those ideas right. Okay. So there we, that's what we need to be able to look at. We need to know about our angle incidence and angle of reflections because that's what our pool ball's doing, isn't it? When we're going to talk about our pool ball on, our table with, on the table with the description of our shot, we're going to have to talk about that because that's going to be a big one because the ball's obviously going to bounce around on the table. But we're going to see our corresponding angles, our alternate angles, and our co-interior angles being able to be formed. Okay, so that's the pull ball. If, um, that's, a, that's assuming that our shot is aiming at an excellent level where we're going to have more than one change of direction. Okay, thanks, Tim. You take that one. Good boy. Okay, good effort. That's the way. It's not easy getting up and talking in front of people. But, okay, you guys listened very well there, which is very good, and you helped him out. Okay, which is exactly what we want to do. It's good to see that people are starting to use our four before me today too. Okay, if they're not too sure, let's make sure we keep going back to using our books, using our people on the table. And Tim said he got some help from people on the table. Okay, gave him some hints. Okay, let's make sure we're using the, all those strategies if we can today. Okay, let's move on to our main task today. Okay, I'd like you to read that carefully. Have a look at our diagram. Read it carefully. Okay. Okay, so Adrian, you had a question. You've got a word you're not sure about. Pronumerals, okay. Pronumerals, what do we, anybody know what we mean by pronumeral? Actually, Cheyenne. Uh, changes a number into a letter. Okay, so it's, it's a number, it's a letter that's representing a number. More, it's not more changing a number, because we're not changing the number, it's just representing, okay. So, pronumeral, we're using letters to describe pro, our pronumerals today, but really a pronumeral can be any symbol. Okay, it doesn't have to be a letter, but letters are just the one, easiest ways to do that. Okay. What else? San, question. Um, I know what value means. Yep. And you just text what if value means. Okay, so what, what would you think a value would mean there? Uh, the amount, like, yeah, 
yeah, choose, choose an amount. That, ex that's exactly what the, in the context here. Okay, choosing a value for A. So you're going to find some value, some number that you're going to assign to that letter A there. So that's, and what's A representing there? An acute angle. An acute angle. So do we all understand what we mean by an acute angle? Yes. Okay, so we have to have an angle that's an acute. Anything else we need to understand there at the moment? Any words we're not sure about? No? Okay. So can we write down in our box on our sheet what the problem wants me to do? So we can start filling out these two boxes. What does the problem want you to do? And how are you going to go about trying to solve this problem? Okay, so fill in these two quickly. Yep, I'll put it back. So you've got those on your sheet, so make sure you're filling that in. Right, Bilal, good. Um, where are you going to measure it? So the idea is not necessarily having to have a protractor, but it's more about knowing all the relationships. Okay, that's really what we want to concentrate on. I know you are all quite good at being able to use a protractor and measure those angles, but it's, we're trying to concentrate on the relationships, okay? What are the relationships that are going to exist where we know of when we get a diagram like this with our parallel lines, okay? You know, on the second line there, it's parallel. Can we, like, extend that line? You can, you can, remember what we did the other day? You could do any other construction you like. Okay, so if you want to extend this line, you can move it. You can go any which way you like. That's not a problem. Logan. I can't really see it from back here. Can I take a photo? Yes, you can, definitely. Use your iPad, use the tools you've got. Okay, so you've got it there. Yes, Victor. Two, two different answers? Two different answers, yes. Okay, so pick, basically you're starting with one value of A, then you're going to choose a different value of A. We'll just choose a different one, different acute angle. Just before we start, Daniel, what did you write down as your... What do you want the problem to do? Um, it wants me to solve out all the angles. Okay, it wants you to, basically it wants you to find all the angles. Okay. How do you go? How are you going to go about doing that? Um, like by like um, finding corresponding angles and points. So you learn to look for corresponding angles. You learn to look for co-interior angles. You learn to look for alternate angles. Okay. So see how Vincent's going back to what we did in the introductory task. So we've got to use all those things we used in the introductory task. Okay. So that was a hint, wasn't it, to be able to use those things? And you're picking up on that one. Victor asked this question, do we understand what we mean by doing it for two values of A? So if you have a look at where, what your solution's going to look like, you've got space to work on the, on the second page. But also, here's where I want you to be able to show all you, put your answers down. So you can put your value for A, you choose your value for A, and then you can work out your other angles, giving reasons why. And then you can pick another value for A and put your answers down and give the reasons why. Do we have to do two solutions? We, we would like, get, we, we get, get one, but if we can, I'd like you to be able to do two. So because, what are we, are we saying that A has to be a particular value? No, it only has to be an acute angle. Make sure we're using our four before me strategies. Let's keep thinking about that. If you need a hint from somebody on your table, ask for a hint. Okay. We've got some hints from the people in when we started and some good questions have been asked. So that should be giving you hints on how to do this one. Okay, we're going to have a look at some solutions. 
Okay. So Marcus, you want to bring yours up to start off with? So can we stop what we're doing at the moment? And have a look at Marcus's solutions. And Marcus, talk us through what you did. Okay, so yeah, looked at it and went, oh, it looks like, looks like 45, okay, yep. Yeah. So how'd you get the B? I got B because on my guy growing up at the top in the working space, I got I put A and B next to each other and they equal right angle. Okay, so you're looking, that one's a right angle between them, so the other one must be 45. What would we call that? How could we describe that? Not corresponding. What do we call on thing, angles on a straight line? Supplementary, there we go. So you know you're getting all those angles being supplementary, so you're going to get that 45 degrees. Okay, so why, how'd you get C? I got C basically the same way you got A and B. Okay. Because on the sheet it looked like a right angle with uh, B. Okay. Is there any other reasons? Not, not sure of any other reasons there, okay. And so D works out the same. And, and think about what we did on that in our introductory task. We think about talking about in terms of the angle of incidence and that angle of reflection. Okay, is that, that's what we'd be seeing, wouldn't we? They'd be both be 45. Okay, what about E? E, basically the same way I got C and E. Just putting it with, putting it with I and D or F. Okay, so that... So C and E are those, sorry, C and F are the angles of incidence and reflection, and D and E add up to be that 90 degrees. So what about solution two? Well, for solution two, since I had to change it up, I just, I made another A equal to B, so I called it G. Okay, yep, so I did some construction, good. Actually, I started off with A as 50, and then in the middle I put an 80, so Okay, so have a look at Marcus' second solution. Have we got any questions for him about that? Daniel. Wouldn't C be 40 degrees since it's um, co interior with B? Okay, think about, think about that. So which ones are we looking at? Which one do you think, Daniel, should be 50? Um, I think C should be 40. 40 and D should be 50. Have we got a reason for that? Um, Let's just get the diagram back again. So you're close. Okay. So why would we say if that was... Okay, so if that's 40, you said that one was 40? No, I said... That one's 50, sorry. Okay, why, would, why should D be 50, be 50? Can you think about what reason? Why would B and D be equal? Right angle there, yep. Okay, but there's another reason we can come up with, Sam. Okay, yeah, they, they see the reflections there, but why is B and D equal? Think about our diagrams with parallel lines, George. Then, well, they're not half 90. Well, it's 50, 40. It's both 50. Okay, Shyan? They're alternate angles, okay? So notice the alternate angles there. So we're using our properties of parallel lines there to say those two. And then you knew those two have to be equal to 50 and to 90. Okay? So you just swapped them around slightly. Thanks, Marcus. Good boy. Okay. Shyan, you want to bring your solutions up? And just let's have a look at the reasons there. Okay, just shift up a little bit more. There we go. You're, in, you're still into your second solution. Let's have a look at your first solution, though. Okay, explain away. Um, well, I just thought A was 70 degrees. I just gave it as a risk because I knew it was going to be an acute angle. I knew it was going to be an acute angle. Okay, yep. Okay, so I knew it was 70 degrees because A is the incidence and then B is the reflection of that. 
Okay, so we've got the incidence and reflection. Okay, there's the explanation there. Good. Okay, great, great reasoning. E and B are alternate angles, so I knew D must be 70 degrees. And I knew that um, if I add D and C and then the right angle, they will, be, they will point to the angles, and they must be supplementary. Okay, so you're getting those, you're getting all those angles that are coming, so when you've got the 90 degrees as well, okay, which is probably the most important, but they're not supplementary angles, but they'd be complementary. Okay, for then 90 degrees. Okay? Yep. And then um, with F, I knew that C and F might be equal because C would be the angle and F is the reflection. Okay, good. Sorry? Yeah, if you, if you like. What did you write down? So you started to look at? Okay, so you want your tie diagram up there? Oh yeah, um, D plus B and I knew there was a centre angle, oh, A and B were in the direction and there was a centre angle there. Yep. So I knew that must be because they all had a few, so I can not. Okay, and then you're showing that there, D plus E, your D plus your E, plus 40 degrees because you had your F and C there. Yeah. Okay, excellent. Okay, you th you, your explanation is great there, okay? You're starting to get those terms in, you're starting to reason it out. What I did like about what Akshayan did is that just because it had A, B, C, D, E in order, he didn't have to go and do it in, in that order. Notice he, he went and did? He did D first. D first, and then, then before he got E, he got F first, okay? And that's okay. You can, you didn't say you had to find them one by one, you just had to find the values there. Okay, great. Thank you very much, Akshayan. Daniel, can you tell us, in your second one, what was the angle you started with? Um, I just did one degree. One degree, okay. And then what did the other angles work out to be? Um, B was one degree, C was 89, um, D and E were one, and F was 89. Okay, so notice <laughs> you got very brave to pick some different numbers. A lot of people went for the 45, which works nicely, or 30, 60, 40, 40 50. I just liked that you, you went a bit brave there and, and did that. That was great. Thank you, gentlemen. Okay, just having a look up on the board here. So, what do we need? What are we, what were we looking for and what we need to see? So, I've written on my diagram there some of the things that we can see. We sort of, and people brought up. So, the angle of incidence and reflection. I chose 40 there, which gave me the 40 and 50 and 40 and 40 and 50 for those. But notice, like, we, we saw those come up in, in people's explanations, okay? We saw the alternate angles being started, started to be talked about. We also saw the complementary angles there and more angles of reflection. And we also started to see the relationships and um, we started to see the idea that those angles were, were co-interior. Okay, Akshayan was hinting about those. Okay, so there's different ways you can start to do that. What I also liked that I saw in people's diagrams is that they start to add some more construction lines. They start to play around with it that way, which is quite fine to do because what that does is add to your explanation, adds to your understanding. And that's what we would like to be able to do. If we need more construction lines, let's, we, we can add that. Yes, Idris. Oh, when I was making mine, I only used alternate angles. Okay, yeah. That's not a problem. You don't, we could get away with, with and find the values without doing other angles, but recognise that the relationships there start to bring, mean we can start to do more than one type of, of those angles. Because the angles, that, all of the relationships that exist, we could sometimes use corresponding angles, co-interior angles, or uh, alternate angles. Okay, I've told you about when I've marked HSC exams and some of the questions there, where there's, there's more than 20 solutions to the one problem. Okay, and that's because of the nature of all these types of angles. Okay, mm. we, need, we just need to move on and finish up before we... So people are starting to get into doing their reflections. So can you start to have a look at your reflection today, please? Tell me how you think you went on this task 
and tell me about how you are working with your reasoning again. Okay, remember this task is about our reasoning. So are we, so are we getting our reasoning correct? Okay, even we might have made a mistake with some of the numbers. Do we get out, we were thinking about our different values of our different lines that we saw, the different uh, terms. Do we get those into our explanations? So finish that one off, please. So once you finish your reflection, can you put the sheet back into the, the folder? Sit down, Ali. Are you putting that back? Yes, grab your yellow sheet and do that one for homework tonight. That's, a consoli that's your consolidation task. Can you put your home, the consolidation task from the last one into the folder and I can have a check of that to see how we went? Not yet, just sitting down for a moment, waiting for everybody. So sitting down, sitting down, Andre. It's along the same lines. That's the whole idea, isn't it? Now we've got. Now we've got. It. Yeah, if we needed to get to it. Okay, that's only if we needed. Now Mark has got to that one today because he got through two couple of solutions. You can try, yeah. But I'm trying. But again, what it says that we have to describe our relationships and describe our reasons. Put your homework in there as well. So put your blue sheets and your homework in the folder, please. Once you've done that. Okay, you can move out.